Hear me out on a problem that most people don't recognize in the United States. There's a reason why it's not covered in the general media or present in the general awareness of the public. What I'm talking about is urban sprawl and bad urban design in the United States. It's so normal that people don't know that there's another option. The current discussion only talks about the environmental impact, but there's not a lot of talk about the psychological and empirical impact it has on people. The social impact of sprawl is so underrated that most people don't realize it. It has been the biggest problem in the United States for the past 30 years. Somebody's benefiting from the current system design, but it's not the common person. You see, people are very animalistic, and they adapt to their surroundings and habitats. They can only move so far on their own, and if a deterrence is built in a way to affect their environment, it's out of their individual control. People have to adapt. Once upon a time, people lived in villages that were created naturally through general settlement. Everything people needed for daily living was accessible within a short distance. It wasn't perfect, and it wasn't easy, but it was also over a hundred years ago. Suddenly everything changed. With the advent of the production line came cheaper cars and suddenly everybody could afford a car. People got wealthier and gained increased mobility and started exploring outside of the cities. With the factories in the cities and the pollution there came a movement to the countrysides and suddenly the cities fragmented. During the industrial revolution there came a movement to separate people from pollution being created. You see, this was a good thing for a while, but the separation mania grew bigger and current designers and lawmakers inherited those building virtues from a hundred years ago even though corporate pollution is much less of a threat and under much scrutiny today. Everything became separated to the point where there are tens of building zones which are placed into pods at the end of large streets. Everything needed for human survival became separated into these pods. Retail, groceries, offices, schools, police, meeting places, every facet of living became categorically separated by miles and miles of land. Situations like this start to happen. Residential areas and retail separated by a wall and retention. It's close enough to walk there, but you're not allowed to. This furthers the need for a driving situation just to get around the wall. If you haven't seen this, it does exist. Yes, America was getting rich off these cars, and the car factories provided jobs and opened the world, and people got through tough times. People went along with the system. Along came Cold War fears and fears of cities being bombed, and so there was a push to make cities less dense and people moved out of the dense cities. President Dwight Eisenhower made wider roads for the transport of nuclear weapons. But the cars, they suffered on 90-degree turning lanes as they were too straining, so the roads got widened. The crowded roads had to be dealt with, so they were made bigger. And then the cars were happy. Yes, the human habitat got wider and roads got bigger, but the option to walk to the store has been eliminated and everything became less accessible. This became the ultimate end to the mom and pops, which relies on social connection to the communities. There was less impulse shopping because people can't walk and less social activity because of their location. They were unable to survive in the new landscape and they shut down. Less stores equal less buying options. This gives more control to the larger corporations. Hungry people who don't have time to drive to the grocery store came to rely on faster options like the corner drugstores, which only sell potato chips or McDonald's. And since gas prices have gone up, driving every day to the grocery store became too expensive. There's less liberty to make everyday cooking decisions, and people started relying on often unhealthy, non-perishables, and now the only options are corner drugstores. The landscape is now a food desert, but the cars were happy, and the car corporations were happy, and people abandoned walking in the wide suburban landscape. More cars hit the road, and waiting times for the crosswalks were widened, or the crosswalks were completely abandoned altogether. It's too expensive to drive, and it's too far to walk, so people just stayed in their homes. The community became wider, and less social activity was happening, and where can people go but inside their houses? Less social activity turns into insecurity and suspicion, and children have lost their social adeptness. It's an antisocial future generation. And those who were too poor to move out of the city to begin with are now legacy owners and have only inherited dilapidated cities like Detroit. Because the rich and the middle class moved out of the cities, there was less money floating around, and the schools and infrastructure crumbled. Less jobs make people desperate. Desperation leads to violence. Violence leads to higher police presence, overcriminalization jails, and ultimately an invisible wall to be built around the city. There is a populist notion that sprawl and suburban settings disperse people in such a way as to make things more peaceful between them. Simply separating people and resources from one another doesn't make for a more peaceful society. Separating people and destroying the chance for social connection and communities 
makes people more stressed. Humans are inherently social creatures. If you try to take that away from them, it makes for a tumultuous society. According to Slate, despite living in an urban civilization, Americans are not more alike today. They are more dissimilar, and dispersal handily accommodates different lifestyles, values, and of course, incomes. Rather than merely suiting America's heterogeneous society, sprawl brings out its negative effects, allowing for people the opportunity to separate from one another. Some cities push the poor out with high rent prices, like San Francisco. Rent prices have gotten so partitioned that the middle class working people who can afford a $200,000 house can only afford to live in a dangerous lower class area or a sprawled stressful suburban area. In the suburbs, there came gated communities as a result of the suspicion that surrounded the people. Class segregation creates disdain and suspicion, because you can't tell how rich a person is just by looking at them. We're like a guerrilla warfare society, you can't tell who the enemy is. This creates suspicion, and suspicion breeds over-criminalization, leading to more jails, and that means you just can't do anything anymore. The public realm is unpleasant, but the cars are happy. In fact, now people now live in their cars. You can't use the sidewalks because only vagrants use the sidewalks. And this is the society that we live in. Suburban sprawl and bad urban design are the root of all these problems. The way that the country is designed is inherently unsustainable and unlivable. The cities have been neglected for so long that they are crumbling and being overtaken by a system that is ultimately unsustainable. Humans need accessible elements for their habitat. It's time to redesign living areas for better communities and sustainability. So what's the solution? Mix suburbs and dense city living together. Building mixed use and denser suburban areas can solve all of this. People vote with their money and mixed use areas traditionally sell more and today it is an unfulfilled market. It was the old way and it was the way that was sustainable for thousands of years. Yes, some people like to live in the countryside but remember that there are people who want to live in the city as well. And the way it is built today now completely eliminates the freedom to do either. And having to drive everywhere completely renders people immobile, especially children and the elderly. Because of the current building laws and codes, building mixed use is made illegal today, even though it was sustainable for thousands of years. The way that the building laws are currently in place makes it impossible for the people to pull together a community and gives less freedom for businesses to start up. But building mixed-use areas with less stringent laws on zoning is important because it lets people naturally incorporate elements needed for their habitat into their communities. Having more options accessible makes for a more sustainable living environment. The current sprawled setup that exists in America is a more competitive environment because there are less resources for people and it causes stress and violence between Americans. The police emerge and develop in interaction with changing mentalities of violence. But communities are naturally self-policing as long as they are tight and they have what they need within the community. There are ways that an inherent urban design affects the communities. Regulators and lawmakers have made stringent zoning laws which restrict property rights. By doing this, the cities are inherently designed to inhibit people from being able to participate in the system. It isn't a capitalist society if people can't participate in the market and contribute to the communities. In other countries, if people can't find a job, they start a lemonade stand on the sidewalk. But a person is completely barred from doing that in America because the laws turn what should be a simple business venture of a lemonade stand into a fight for permits. The laws serve to keep the streets sterile and lubricated only for movement through the nearest drive through Stringent zoning laws, which are ultimately controlled in favor of large businesses, only serve to foster political corruption in the United States there would naturally be more businesses than McDonald's if they were allowed. Starting a business in America's sprawled environment is too expensive for the common person. Having mixed-use areas would give them a competitive edge against larger corporations. Less zoning laws have been equated to lower housing costs. Look at Houston, America's biggest city without zoning laws. Because of this, according to the 2006 census, Houston's average dwelling price was 126000 compared to 496000 in the strictly enforced New York. Between 2000 and 2007, the city grew by 19.4%. Compare that with just 2.7% for New York. Less stringent zoning laws give designers more liberty to build mixed-use areas that American people are craving for. Okay, so mixed-use is better. But how can it be designed for such a divided population? Stop gentrification and stop experimenting on poor people. Balancing affordable housing among upper and middle class type housing is necessary. It is important to equally disperse wealthy among villages via offered housing. Towns have historically been built like this and it works. 
The wealthy have higher standards and more money to dedicate to culture, school, and infrastructure. Even in the old days, the kings and barons lived in the same communities as the poor, and they contributed to society. But to make this work, you can't have either overtake the city. They need to be designed by experts in order to make it work. And there are people that have the know-how to do it. It's just a question of whether people will support it. The second rule is to have affordable housing for the poor look normal so they don't feel embarrassed about where they live. Having normal looking housing with similar entrances will reduce destructive tendencies and violence in the communities and will make people feel normal again. Rich and poor housing needs to be designed into the community and balanced in increments. Have retail attached to housing. Retail with housing upstairs traditionally sells more. Also, incorporating retail and businesses within the communities will put large businesses under larger scrutiny within the community. This creates the opportunity for better services and products and gives the control back to the people. This is why mom and pop businesses have better reputations within communities because they are connected to them. Make the public realm of the suburbs less stressful and ugly. Sidewalks should be protected from cars with either trees or parking on the sides of the roads. Don't rely on landscapers to fix the architectural deficiencies too much. Planting a couple flowers didn't work in the suburbs and will never fix the problems. The reason it doesn't work isn't because it isn't pretty, it's because it's tough to live there. Stop setting buildings back from the roads. The reason they require this now is to allow for parking, but parking should be in the back to make stores more accessible by walking and less sprawled out. Make the roads narrower. Narrower roads make for less dangerous traffic, more walkable areas, and thus better communities. Also, if these areas are more walkable and vibrant, why would you need to drive through them anyways? More walkable areas makes for a more vibrant area and for better economy. It makes it friendlier to people and cars. It also gives a way for people to go out and have physical activity. Where do you think America's obesity problems come from? Tighter areas are also easier to govern. The large sprawled area that exists today is nearly impossible to govern. Planners also need to take into account the concept of the sense of place. People feel a sense of place in a room because there are four walls. To achieve a sense of place in an area, the building ratio between the width of the area and the height of the walls should be 1 to 6. People naturally gather in areas that are built with walls because it makes them feel safer to be there. Communities naturally have gathering places in these areas, and designers should take that into account when designing. These areas are naturally pleasing to people, and thus you get more pedestrian activity in these areas and also more social activity. These areas do not exist in suburbia, and so there are no gathering areas for the communities. Also, putting trees along the roads will make them feel less spaced out and give them a natural sense of place. Have a discipline of front and back to the buildings and don't design them clustering and twirling around the area. This makes the area stressful and difficult to navigate. There is a reason civilization built it the way they did traditionally. The reason why the swirling suburbs were built swirling like this is because the designers needed a way to terminate vistas in their design of the area, and having the roads turn created a way to do that. In the old days, the problems were solved by building large landmarks like the Eiffel Tower at the end of large roads to mark the vistas with a big landmark. Eliminate garages in the front of buildings as they are intrinsically bad. There's a reason why they serve to reduce pedestrian activities in suburbs. Again, humans are inherently social creatures who are interested in people doing things, turning on lights, opening windows. The only information the garage gives people is that the car lives there. Houses without garages in the front are more intrinsically pleasant for the area and thus create more interesting environments for people. Build vertically rather than horizontally to make for a denser area. Stop making schools look like concentration camp barracks and build them better like they used to. Safeguarding the human habitat is more important than making cars happy. Mixed use and leaner urbanism is better for a better community. It makes for easier living and it would be for a more social community and less violent society. It gets people out of their house and allows for more physical activity in a more healthy society. It gives the people their personal liberties back and the choice of whether to live in the city or country. It makes for a tighter self-policing community and less physical area to govern so that authorities don't have to be everywhere at once. That makes for less crime and less jails. Leaner suburbanism and better urban design offers a better quality of life to the people. It's time to take the communities back from the clutches of the few and start building a better life for Americans.